Hi, I'm Mike Havey. I'm a Senior Specialist Solutions Architect with AWS. I specialize in Amazon Neptune, a managed graph database service. And my topic today is graph data virtualization in Amazon Neptune. So we'll begin by talking about what graph data virtualization is and why you would want to use it. Then I'll give an example that shows climate reading virtualization involving Neptune and a data lake. And then as a call to action, I'll encourage you to deploy Neptune and test virtualization all in your own account. So what is graph data virtualization? Suppose that I have data in a graph database, but I also have related data outside the graph in another database. And I want to be able to combine the data in a single query. Now, query federation is the idea that I can combine multiple data sources in a single query. We'll go one step further and do virtualization. In virtualization, if I query from my graph, I can get data both from my graph and from outside the graph as part of a single query. And it's as if that data from outside the graph is virtually in my graph. Here's an example of the concept. Suppose I have my own graph database on the left and I have an external graph database on the right. If I issue a query to my graph database on the left, I want to be able to bring in data from the other graph database on the right. And notice the dashed lines. They indicate that resources in my graph on the left have implicit relationships to resources in the graph on the right. Going a bit further, suppose that Again, I have my graph database on the left, but a relational database on the right with an implicit relationship between resources in my graph to rows in the relational database. And I want to be able to run a query against my graph database, which also brings in data from the rows in the relational database. So why would one want to do graph data virtualization? Think about the nature of a graph. A graph draws relationships between many types of entities. Its job is really just to connect a lot of stuff together. And much of the detail of those entities is outside the graph. And it may be very, very large. I don't want to ingest it into the graph, but I have a business requirement to bring the data back as part of a graph query. So in effect, I have a business requirement that calls for a virtualization approach. So in our example of climate data, we have weather stations around the globe that collect temperature readings several times a minute. And we want to be able to retrieve those readings filtered and joined by weather station data. The data itself is publicly available from the National Centers for Environmental Information at the link shown here. And here's our design, which I'll walk through step by step momentarily but I wanted to highlight the two main repositories of the data. We keep the weather station data in a graph database on Amazon Neptune. And this allows us to navigate relationships between stations and their locations. We keep the readings data in the data lake. And within the data lake, we have an Amazon simple storage service bucket where we maintain the data. And we can query this through SQL. The Amazon Athena service allows us to, through a SQL interface, obtain the, the, the readings data from S3. A key piece of this puzzle then is Neptune. And here's a link where you can read about it. And importantly, Neptune supports two main graph representations. One is called property graph an example of which is Apache Tinkerpop. And the other is Resource Description Framework, or RDF, which is defined by the World Wide Web Consortium, the W3C, and its query language is called Sparkle. And in, the, in this demo, we'll use RDF because of a couple of key ingredients provided by Sparkle. In particular, as defined by the W3C, we have, first of all, a standard protocol built on HTTP that allows clients to call any RDF database basically using the same protocol. So there's an 
open interoperability between clients and, and uh, databases. And also there's query federation. So there's a standardized way within Sparkle by which a client can call database A, but as an inner query to database A, ask for additional information from database B. And it will be the responsibility of database A to then go collect that data and send it back to the client. So we're going to use these capabilities to build virtualization. And there's a good blog post that discusses how to to execute federated queries on Neptune at the link shown here. Now, we won't talk about virtualization with the property graph today. Suffice it to say, there's no conventional approach within the Tinkerpop world to do federation. Some potential impro approaches might involve combined query from, from a REST API or from GraphQL, or to use an approach like Athena Federation if you'd like to discuss the approach with us, please contact our team uh, at the email address shown here. Now, now let's walk through the design step by step. In the first step, we have an end user, a data subject matter expert, working within a database client. And in this case, we'll use a Neptune notebook built on Amazon SageMaker. And the end user will run a Sparkle query that will ask for both weather station data and weather reading data. So that's a Sparkle query, and that is issued to the Neptune database. So Neptune's responsibility will be to bring back to the client both the station and readings data. Now, the readings data is not accessible through Sparkle. It resides in the data lake. We know we can get to it through SQL. So we're going to need some middle component that kind of bridges that gap between Sparkle and SQL. And that component will be a third party component called ONTOP BKG or Virtual Knowledge Graph. So this is an open source tool which uh, on the one hand knows how to access SQL data sources through JDBC, but also offers a standardized Sparkle endpoint. So you can call it through Sparkle and have it in turn issue SQL to go to relational databases and data lakes or any SQL compliant data source. And you provided a mapping instructing it how to map the Sparkle to the SQL. So having received the Sparkle request on top, which by the way, we deploy as a container on the Amazon Elastic container service. On top will issue a SQL query to Athena. And Athena will get the data from the data lake as follows. First of all, it will we, we define a tabular structure around the, the weather readings data using the glue data catalog. So Athena will get that structure from the catalog and then it will get the data from the S3 bucket. Athena will then return back the SQL results to ONTOP. And ONTOP, in turn, uses its mapping to translate those SQL results to Sparkle results back to Neptune. Here is our Git repository. So the README file summarizes the design that we just went through and has some setup instructions. So through CloudFormation, you can provision in your own AWS account this solution, which consists of a Neptune cluster, a notebook, an ECS cluster, a data lake. And after CloudFormation completes, there's some post setup instructions uh, involving copying data, temperature readings into the lake, as well as building the on top container. And we provide a Cloud9 IDE to simplify that setup. And also, I want to point out in the repository is the actual mapping that ONTOP uses to map from Sparkle to SQL. And that is here. And there's a helpful readme that describes how this mapping works. In particular, we take columns from rows returned from the table in the data lake like those highlighted here, and map those to triples, RDF triples, 
and a, a triple is of the form subject, predicate, object. So this readme describes exactly how the mapping takes these columns and translates them into triples that make sense to an RDF database and, and can be understood through a Sparkle query. Now let's look at the data itself. Let's start with the data lake. And we'll begin with the Athena uh, service. So here we see in the Athena query editor that we're able to run a, a SQL select query against the climate table in the data lake. And as you can see in the results, each row represents a particular reading. So it references a particular station. It's captured at a particular date. And you can see that the readings are shown in Fahrenheit and Celsius. Now this tabular structure is defined within the Glue Data Catalog. So here in the Glue Data Catalog, we can see that we have a table called Climate. And here is its tabular structure. Here are the columns. And also notice that its location is S3. Now let's look at S3. Here is our bucket and here is a particular folder for the year 1985. And notice that the readings are expressed in Apache Parquet files. Now let's look at Neptune. So here is a notebook that gives us a client interface to query Neptune. If we run through it, the first cell actually allows us to bulk load the station data into Neptune. And remember that Neptune has the stations, but it does not have the readings. We can run a query against the stations. So this Sparkle query actually gets just details about a particular station, Ardrossan UK. Well, we can also run a federated query like the one we described at length when walking through the design. So this Sparkle query is a federated query that gets both stations and readings. So the first part of the query actually gets information about the Manchester UK station. And then there's an inner query that gets information about the readings for Manchester with a particular filter. We're only interested in readings where Celsius is greater than or equal to 30. And it will bring back the Celsius daytime and Fahrenheit for those uh, for those for that station. And notice that we use a service directive to indicate where to get the data from. So we want to run an inner Sparkle query against this endpoint. And this is the ONTOP container. So ONTOP is listening on the IP shown here and on this port. It is a, it's a Sparkle endpoint and it's able to federate. So Neptune is able to invoke the ONTOP endpoint to get back these readings. And we can see that in the results set, we have readings for Manchester captured on a particular date time with a given Celsius and Fahrenheit readings. Now for next steps, I encourage you to deploy this demo in your own AWS account. The link shown here is to our Git repo and you can provision Neptune, the data lake on top and all the supporting components and get the demo up and running in minutes. And if you'd like to discuss how to build similar use cases, please contact my team. Our email address is wwso-neptune-ssa at amazon.com. Again, my name is Mike Habe. It's been a pleasure presenting to you today. Thank you very much.